morning friends, uh, my name is Varindar and I welcome you to my YouTube channel Cloud Ninja. So in this video we will study what is cloud computing and what are the five different characteristics of cloud computing. Let me give you a short uh, brief diagram according to me what is cloud computing, a basic definition if you will uh, ask anybody. Cloud computing basically is a model wherein, wherein you will get uh, things like compute, storage, resources, memory, everything in the cloud. But uh, this is a de this is not the definition which uh, will definitely help you out. What was happening is, uh, you know, a, a decade back, a number of vendors were coming into the market to give the services uh, into the cloud or coming as a cloud vendor. But the problem was uh, when the enterprises or the companies were, you know, actually using their services, they, they felt that, okay, either the things are not working well and their business is not uh, going up and they were not actually getting the benefit. So at that point of time, NIST, National Institutes of Standard and Technology, came into the picture and they said that, okay, these are the five characteristics of cloud computing and if that any provider is able to provide you these five characteristics, just go ahead and, you know, start using the services for uh, those organizations or those cloud providers. So let's study what are those uh, five characteristics. So according to NIST, this is a long definition uh, where it says that cloud computing is a model for enabling ubiquitous convenient on-demand network access to a shared pool of configurable computing resources like network servers that can be rapidly provisioned and released with a minimal managed effort of service provider interaction. Uh, Believe me, when uh, when someone asked me that, okay, study this definition, this is cloud computing, and my reaction was similar to like, what do you want to say, man? What do you mean, actually? I'm not able to understand you a single term. So let's study first that what are the five uh, different characteristics of cloud computing. Then we'll move on to the this definition again, and we'll study will be better able to understand the definition. So let's study what are the different five characteristics. The first uh, characteristics uh, is basically out of these five uh, is on-demand self-service. What it says is a consumer can on and treat provision computing capabilities such as server time, network storage as needed automatically without requiring human interaction with each other. What NIST says is that on-demand self-service means in case if you are using the cloud provider or services of the any of the cloud provider like AWS or uh, Microsoft Azure, in that case, uh, no human interaction or interaction from the service provider or uh, you can say a service provider help is not required just to prov to get the servers or to the storage or anything in the cloud. So it is like. Whenever any organization or the individual you need the service, you just go ahead and you should be able to get the service. That is the meaning of on-demand self-service. So you can see this, that uh, a user A will be able to get, need to get computer sources, messaging service, user B in case would like to get application services, then user D would like to get platform service, storage service. So this all should be available to all the cloud users without having any kind of interaction or from the service providers. It is not like you need some storage service and you are waiting for the service provider to provide you the service. So this is actually the first characteristics that on-demand self-service. Whenever you need a service, you should be able to get that without the help of the uh, service provider like uh, AWS uh, or provider uh, Azure. So what are the, what is the second characteristics is broad network access. What it means is that Capabilities are available over the network access to standard mechanism that promote the use by heterogeneous thick or thin client programs, so for example, mobile phones, tablets, laptops, or workstation. It means that you should be able to access your cloud platform, whether it is AWS or Azure. It should be accessible through the uh, laptop, through the mobile phones, through a thick client, thin client, or tablet. It should not be limited to a certain source since we are moving to the smartphones and so in that case, there are there should be apps available to manage the cloud platform. Like you can go ahead and download the AWS app or Azure app to to manage the your cloud from uh, platform. Even if you'll uh, search onto the Windows uh, this uh, Android app store or uh, iOS app store, Apple app store, you'll be able to find that okay, even you are able to manage.
Union here, VMware infrastructure through this uh, through this app. So it's like it should be having the broad network access means your cloud should be cloud platform should be accessible through the mobile phones, tablet, laptops, whichever the things available to access the or having an Internet Explorer, you'll be able to access that. So that is the second characteristic. The third is the resource pooling. So basically, uh, it is a long definition, uh, and uh, the main, uh, the main, uh, I would say that uh, the crux of this resource pooling is that whichever your uh, provider is, maybe it is uh, IBM, Rackspace, Azure, or AWS. So it should have a resource pooling means the things like so what are the resources which will be using in cloud like RAM, storage, CPU. They should be having the pool of resources. It is they should not be limited, and it should support the multi-tenant environment. It should not be like that. Okay, that only these many CPUs would be provided, or this is only the RAM capacity or a storage capacity. So it should have a pool of resources which should be multi access by the different uh, providers using the multi-tenant environment should not be limited uh, and it should be available to the users uh, on demand and there is one another thing if you can see that I have uh, highlighted in yellow that there is a sense of location independence in that customer generally has no control or knowledge over the exact location of the provider but but may be able to specify the location at a higher level like country, state, data center. This is because there may be a compliance requirement uh, that uh, in case you are operating from UK, US, or any of the country, you, you need to obey certain regulations and uh, country laws in that case. The customer should be able to know that, okay, from a higher perspective, where they are making their VPC, like data center or all, all other things. So in that case, it should have a resource pooling as well as the customer should be able to know that, okay, what which is the location at a higher level where they are using these services in the cloud? So this is the third characteristic. The first we studied is on demand self uh, service. The second we studied is that broad network access it should be accessible via the your uh, mobile phones, tablets, and apps. And the third is resource pooling. It should have a pool of resources and should support the multi tenant environment. The fourth characteristic is rapid elasticity. So as we know the meaning of elasticity that we can, you know, uh, pull it up, pull it down. Like capabilities can be elasticity provisioned and released in some cases automatically to scale rapidly upward and inward with the demand. To the consumers, the capability available for provisioning often appears to be unlimited and can be appropriated in any quantity. So like in case uh, there is a demand like uh, you are having a website and there is a sale going on so in that case and you don't know that how much traffic uh, will be hitting your website in that case. In case uh, more traffic is coming, you should be or the customer should be able to scale up in case the demand is coming very high and in case the demand is low or the business is not working well, the customer should be able to scroll down. So where it will actually help is it will it will help in uh, scaling up and scaling down. Let's say if the business is going up, you should be able to scale down. If the business is going down, you should be able to scale down. So in that case, organizations' cost will go down, and uh, that is why that more of the organizations are adopting the cloud technology because they'll actually be able to scale down. But in case of on-premise, scaling down is something like you are you have already spent the cost onto the hardware and all things. So this is the main thing that organizations are moving on to the cloud. So this is the fourth characteristic, rapid elasticity. Fifth is the measured service. That, see, we are we'll be using different resources like uh, compute, memory, storage, all these things we are using in the cloud. And the cloud provider is uh, going to bill you. So in that case, the you can say that, uh, you know, cloud system automatically control and optimize the resource by leveraging a metering capability at some level of abstraction. That, it should have a transparency that, okay, what amount of storage you have used, what amount of processing power, bandwidth, or users have used the resources. That is, that cloud provider should provide the transparency that, okay, which services was used at what time, and and this services is uh, having this much amount, and uh, well, so each and every services has a, have a you know, uh, billing detail and all the things. It, 
means that you are using the different services within the cloud and it is a multi-tenant environment. So for, and since multiple uh, users or organizations should be using the cloud environment, so cloud providers should be able to provide the transparency in case of billing. It is not like a organization is A organization bill or services bill is being charged to the organization B bill. So it is like even if, you know, they are supporting the multi-tenant environment, they should have the transparency in the billing for that. So these are the five characteristics uh, we have studied. And uh, I think uh, now we'll come again to the definition which we studied in the first place and we'll be able to better understand. See, what NIST said is that cloud computing is a model for enabling ubiquitous convenience. It means it should be having the access, you know, all over the world and it should be present everywhere as a cloud provider and on-demand network access to a shared pool of on-demand access, we studied that, okay, this is the first characteristics to a shared pool of configurable computing resources like, you know, this is the second characteristics, network server, storage, and the different resources that can be rapidly provisioned that as and when the customer requires that he should be able to scale up and release with minimal management effort or service provider interaction that these are, this definition is basically uh, is combined by INST by if you can see that they have combined all the five characteristics into this definition and they release this definition that okay if you are going into the market and want to study that okay what is cloud computing or want to take a service from the uh, service provider you should see that okay they are able to provide this uh, five characteristics there are other things that you can look for the security they are uh, uh, non-disclosure agreement and all those things, but these are the five characteristics which one should look. I think uh, when we studied the first, my reaction was like this, but I think now your reaction should be like this, like it was. So thank you friends for watching this video. If you really like this video, please hit like button, share button, and uh, do subscribe our channel Cloud Ninja so that uh, you can get the update about the subsequent videos which will